we're seeing some of the lowest numbers um, in COVID counts since you know since probably back in the summer um what's it been like on your end with the you know with just the drastic fall off of numbers here in the county well what we're seeing is the lockdown the effects of the lockdown after boxing day three two to three weeks later we start seeing it and then on from that so we've had um i haven't seen today's numbers but we we may be now have a week where we've only had one case. If we get a zero today, it'll be one case in a week. That's phenomenal. As you said, that goes back to, uh, I think it may have been June or July that we had numbers who were that good. But uh, And we have two folks who are in isolation sh who should be coming out soon. So it's re And no outbreaks. So it's really looking great. But, but this can change on a dime. We've seen uh, the numbers are starting to drop off nationally in Ottawa and in Ontario, but again, it can turn on a dime. So people have to keep up their guard. They have to keep doing what they need to do because uh, we know uh, having a mass vaccination program is a long way away. Now the uh, vaccine, as you mentioned, uh, the early talks were that we were going to see it uh, possibly earlier than the beginning of February. Um, what do you have of any information on where the vaccine is right now? Well, we actually have enough uh, for half our long-term care home residents right now in the county, and we're working out some things with the province. There's sort of a momentary holdup, which we uh, do to some cold chain issues, and we're expecting the green light any minute. Um, so we intend to vaccinate uh, residents in four retire, uh, sorry, long-term care homes this week. And we're also expecting another shipment next week. So we hope that by uh, Friday week, uh, we will have done all the residents um, in the long-term care homes in the county. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough for staff at this point. Uh, we've all heard about supply shortages and so the province decided to sort of get a trickle out this week and a trickle out next week so that we could do the most vulnerable people of all. So uh, and after that, we're sort of on hold, uh, given all these supply issues uh, in Europe and elsewhere. Um, but again, it brings us back to the point that people really need to keep up their guard. We're a long way from being out of this and people need to really observe those public health measures because I've said it time and time again, they are the offense as we do battle against COVID. Now the, uh, the vaccines, they are being distributed through the paramedic service. Is that how in through, uh, like are they the ones administering these shots? No, the, the long-term care homes for the residents, they're pretty much self-sufficient. Yeah, they're getting a little bit of help from paramedics and public health. Uh, as you know, um, sticking a needle in someone's arm is probably 10% of the work. There's all this, the logistics, the consent forms, the monitoring afterwards. So there are paramedics and public health personnel on site. Uh, the paramedics may assume a greater role in the county homes uh, they're, because they're larger, we'll see. But by and large, um, it's the uh, staff of the, uh, these homes with help from public health and with help from uh, paramedics. And then as we move out, it'll be more challenging because uh, there's less personnel in sight that are trained healthcare workers. So we'll, there'll be more involvement at that point. And in due time, we're looking to VTAC, we're looking to primary care, we're looking to the hospitals, uh, EMS and public health. Uh, pretty much anybody and everybody, even retirees can come forward and help us. If we were to get all the shots that we were going to have, when do you when would you guys have seen the general public in the valley getting their shots? I, I don't see that's a long way away, Trevor, because first of all, you have uh, long term care homes. Well, basically, let's start. You have vulnerable seniors who are living in congregate settings and then you have the people who are taking care of them. And then you have the uh, the other health care workers whether it be hospitals or primary care, depending on what their exposure is. There's even a hierarchy there as to who's most, most exposed. And then we have frontline folks. Don't forget the paramedics. Um, so it's very important to go through that. And then we come back to, uh, okay, you know, who's over 80 and who's over 70 and who's at risk um, because of other vulnerabilities. So it's fair to say that I think it's going to be uh, uh, a long time 
uh, not a long time, but a few months before we, uh, before someone like you can uh, line up for a vaccine. 